From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up? Welcome on into Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. Head out there this weekend, partied up with all the good people, the Denzians or Denizens. I'll always say Denzians for some reason, Corey. I think I have maybe I have a mild case of dyslexia because I you always could. fumble over things. Who knows? I need to get better. Warchant.com, your ultimate semi sports source. Promo code Warchant30 gets you a 30 free day membership on the website. Use it. Hit the thumbs up if you're listening to us on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube page. That's totally free. No credit card information needed. And maybe a five-star rating and subsequent review on iTunes or whatever Apple device uh, you use to uh, listen to your podcasts. So we are here for you folks, recording a show. Oh, hey, and real quick, uh, shout out to our guy, Nick. Apparently, this guy, Nick, listens to the podcast every single day. Uh, This is according to his wife, Coco. Uh, She emailed Corey and I saying... uh, he listens to the show every morning. He's graduating on May 13th. That is today as you're listening to this podcast with his doctorate from Baylor. Our guy, PhD from Baylor. Uh, she asked if we could give him a shout out. So there you go. Absolutely. Congratulations to you, Nick, uh, and for having a pretty awesome wife, apparently, in Coco. As we record this, uh, Florida State softball game is still going on. First round action against Virginia. Um Listen, it's the ACC tournament. If, if it meant really a lot, we would, we'd would we wait this thing up. Uh, but, you know, they're going to be a top eight seed, and that's all that matters. This weekend, don't forget, Florida State takes on Miami at Hauser, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and then noon, Saturday and Sunday. Mm. Those games will be televised. Saturday on ACC Network. Sunday will be on uh, ESPNU. So tune in for that one. Feels like they, they win that series. They they cement themselves in the tournament, I would think, right, Corey? They they sit pretty good right now, but if you win the Miami series, you're you can go ahead and say that you've tied that streak of all time consecutive regional appearances, I would think. No? Uh yes, I would think that as well. That would be another two other really big RPI wins. Um you know they they and they'd have more opportunities. You know they got another game with Florida. They're at it. You know, they're at UNC and they got whoever they play in the ACC tournament. So they got they got chances. Um, but yes, I would say that guarantees. I mean they're sitting really well right now. Whatever they are in the RPI, like right around twenty, um, of being uh, 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 you know getting an at large berth even if they don't win the tournament. But yes, two wins this weekend. Sew it up. There's no way that you could have that kind of RPI with that strength of schedule uh, and, you know, at least 33 wins and not get into the tournament. But you'd also have bigger fish to, to go catch, like perhaps getting a regional. Yeah. I'd, you'd I'd still be on board for that. I don't I don't think that can happen unless they win this series. If they don't win this series, they're not hosting a regional. They'll be on the road. Agreed. Agreed. All right, let's uh, resume what we did yesterday, and that's the Renegade Express. Also, if you missed out on any of the shows, uh, do check out warchant.com for, for full wrap-ups from Amelia Island and Iris reporting at the ACC meetings, all that stuff over at the website, warchant.com. John Henry Jones Jr., welcome back. I'm really hoping the ACC does ditch divisions as soon as possible. The scheduling possibilities are so much more interesting with that three five five format that Ira mentioned. And I know this isn't Wake Up Irish, but there's some fascinating implications for Notre Dame. Maybe there's still a way to make their five-game ACC schedule work within the new format. Has there been any mention of Notre Dame football at the meetings so far? That is a really good question. Uh, We asked Ira about this off the air, and he said no. Like, no one had mentioned Notre Dame at all, uh, which is I guess maybe a little bit interesting, especially with this whole three-five-five model and how Notre Dame fits into it because they're not a full-time conference member, plus you know this whole pipe dream of them maybe joining the ACC to blow up this entire conference. But yeah, according to Ira, when we spoke to him, no real uh, explicit mention of Notre Dame and any of the people he spoke to when he was out there at Amelia Island this past week. And then the second part, Corey says, uh, then thinking more long-term, what does happen to Notre Dame if and when Power 5 goes to the two mega conferences in the Big Ten and SEC, do they still try to hold on to their independence for their special scheduling? If they don't want to join, maybe they can go play exhibition games in Europe 
and Japan. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, no, they, they're always going to make room for Notre Dame. Notre Dame will always have a seat at the table. Um, I well, don't know what they would do as far as I mean, Notre Dame. Them- Notre Dame's only independent. Sorry, Corey. They're only independent because it makes financial sense for them. The moment it no longer does, they'll be like, whatever, we don't need NBC's exclusive television rights or we don't need their exclusive networking to put our stuff out there. They'll go wherever makes the most financial sense for them, don't you think? Well, absolutely. Yeah, I, I just it's hard to predict what that would be 10, 12 years from now whenever this actually comes to fruition. Um, and there are two mega conferences or they do break away from the power. The power five breaks away from the group of five. It's hard to know what the TV, the, the, the TV deals will be, how ESPN will structure it, where Notre Dame fits in and all that. Um, but yes, Notre Dame is, is, is going to be taken care of and they, they will have a seat at the table, um, whether they're independent or because it makes financial sense. They do join a conference. Um, they are you know full time football wise. I'm talking about. Um, th- they'll be there. They'll be in the mix. They're not going to not have college football without Notre Dame. It would be cool if Notre Dame could be like, yeah, we'll join the ACC. But that apparently that's not. They're just fine doing what they do. I think you can't blame them though. I mean, they make more money being independent. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna. I get. You know, I mean, I can blame they, them if you they, know. I, I blame all these people that are making a ton of money because they don't care about the future of the sport. It's all about the money now, 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 which is great for you now, now, now. There not, might not be a sport for you to be a part of in 25 years. If this road, if you keep going down this road, it's going to be regionalized. It's going to have the popularity of NASCAR. Um, if you want to keep going down this road, that's fine. Good luck. Or you could all work together, the people that are making a ton of money, and think about the betterment of the sport. You know, Jerry Jones, in a way, Jerry Jones thinks about the betterment of the sport. Yeah. Think about what he could get with his own TV contracts and say, screw you. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it by myself, but he's part of a league. He's part of a league that, that, that awards a trophy. And if Notre Dame could be a part of a league that awarded a trophy, then that would make everybody more money. But I know that's socialist. I know somebody mentioned it. I think it was NYC Noel too mentioned on the show the other day in the question, but you know, just in terms of underestimating how this could pollute the environment and I know it all. Everyone's like, "Hey, if you if you're not for these kids getting, you know, hundred thousand dollar checks for whatever reason, you know, you're you're part of the problem or whatever. Beat it. We'll we'll be fine without you. Give it three years, man. Give it three or yep. four years of your your third string tackle somehow making eighty five thousand dollars, and then you still go nine and three, and see how many people start checking out. I mean, I think even maybe not Alabama, maybe not Georgia, maybe some Tennessee fans." You know, maybe some Ole Miss fans, maybe some Florida State fans. I think enough fans from enough teams aren't going to like it's just. Well, and it, here's the difference, right? Like you, I, you know, as a Falcons fan, I'm upset because the Falcons were terrible this year, but I didn't spend any of my money on it. Right. I didn't. I didn't give money to the right guard that ended up playing two games and getting hurt and then transferred. Like I, that wasn't my money. You weren't asking for my money to pay the team. But now all your all your big money invest all your big money fans and even some small money fans you have all these collectives where you're asking for money to help put the roster together, and if that roster still is winning five or six games, yeah, you're going to stop getting some money. So there there's an inherent pressure now that comes with this. But yes, I mean let's see. Maybe we're all making uh, much ado about nothing, and it'll be the the sport we've always loved. Whatever or it could really be uh, hurting the long-term potential of this sport. And nobody's at the wheel steering this thing. Daryl, Thomasville, North Carolina, Captain D underscore 63. Good morning or evening, Corey and Aslan. First, I am for getting rid of the divisions. I guess I'm, I am most things I am in the minority. I, I, I'm fine with divisions. I don't, I don't like this whole top two team thing, but whatever. Hopefully it's a problem we'll have to encounter early and often when they do this. Uh, get rid of the divisions. I'm in favor of it and play teams closer to home and play every team three or four years. Well, it's every two years then or every three years, right, Corey? Because the three, five, five or every two years because it's three, five, five. You'll play five teams one year and then a different five the next year. So right, right. Correct. Gentlemen, as you all mentioned earlier in the week, the ACC is getting left in the dust as far as money goes against the SEC and the big conferences, uh, big 10, I guess by several million. What would it take for another conference to pluck away Florida State, Clemson, Miami from the ACC, or what does the ACC have to do 
to try to catch up with these other conferences? Does the Notre Dame have to join full-time? Does the ACC have to go and pluck a couple great Power 5 teams away to come into the ACC to get a new deal from ESPN? What say you all? Thanks for all you do. Support Warchant.com. Hit the like button. Support those who support this show and these great hosts. Ooh, thank you, Daryl. Go Knowles. Well, yeah, and Phillips was asked a lot about that on uh, on Wednesday at Amelia Island, and he didn't have a ton of great answers for it that I thought. Um, said there's going to be a chief revenue officer, um, so so that's something. But, yeah, you know, look, Notre Dame full-time would, would certainly shake up the TV contract for sure. Um, but as Aslan alluded to, why would Notre Dame do that other than, you know, maybe trying to save the sport? But whatever, it's fine. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, on, uh, but other than that, yeah, I just don't know – who who do you pull? Like who who's going to move the needle out there? Uh, what what State. team out there gets yeah. ratings? Yeah, that's not in a like Southern Cal. Maybe the, the alliance has to come to fruition. You're hoping the the maybe the three five five somehow gets adapted in uh, to a three four one, and you start scheduling a Pac twelve team every year, play Washington or Oregon or Southern Cal or UCLA, and then. It's, Four good teams. Yeah, I mean that's that's not that might be the only option. Honestly, is if those three teams start doing these cross sectional uh, non conference games, but it's got to be more than one a year. Yeah. Um, but that that and maybe they have their own championship game between those three conferences. I don't know, but you you've got to figure something out um, because uh, yeah, the the way it's going now, there's there's really nothing you can do other than getting a new contract, and you know. That's not happening uh, anytime soon, we don't think. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, it'd be great if you got like a USC and an Oregon one year and then like a, I don't even care, like a Cal, Arizona State the next year. That's something you could sell as a package to, you know, and there's all these, I mean, but again, there's the grant of rights. You, you, that's 2036. So you'd have to break that up um, and, and see if that if is even doable. But, yeah, I mean, you'd have to think outside the box, man. Um, and I don't know that there's, I don't even know if the, if you, even if you get as far outside the box as possible, if there's anything to come up with, um, Notre Dame joining full time would be great, but I mean, we've been doing this now for 10 years. It's clearly not happening. They're fine with what they do. They make the playoff the way they do it. I mean, they're not going to win a national championship, but they make the playoff. They're in the run. They're in the running for the playoff every year. They get their own, they get their USC game every year. They get their army and Navy game every year. Um, and they love it like that. So they have no real reason to want to join a conference full-time. The only reason they would is if it was said, you have to be in a conference to play for a championship. Hmm. If they stopped getting preferential treatment because of what they did when uh, TVs were in black and white, and if they stopped getting that kind of treatment and actually had to join a conference to play for a championship instead of make their own schedules every year, um, then may, that would be the, the, the push they would need to get in, but who's going to force them to do that? Nobody. So we're, we're kind of stuck. Buckle up. But either way, something can happen. Maybe but the, 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 miracles happen all the time, guys. The show's worldwide. You know, we've got listeners in Singapore, Japan, Russia. Maybe we, if we can get the ear of the guy at the Vatican City, do you think the Pope would step in? Could the Pope go to Notre Dame and just talk about how important college football is to society? I'm like, come on, step up, guys. It's a, it's a great idea. I feel like uh, he's a different kind of pope, he so is. maybe he would. Maybe he would talk. Maybe he loves Florida State. I don't know. Big Dalvin Cook fan, the pope. I don't know that you ever heard that, but I read a biography about him where he was a huge Dalvin fan. So maybe he cares enough about college football to, to make that happen. But, yeah, apparently that's the only person that could tell Notre Dame what to do. And even then, it's iffy. Island Chief, wake up. Hope the visit to Amelia Island was productive. 108 holes of golf. That does not include the three mini golfs on the island. And if you want a burger, T Ray's gas station. Yum. Mm. Okay. All right. We need to get that over to Ira next year. Yeah. Maybe you'll go. Maybe you can go, Corey, and then cleanse your hands in the Himalayan salt. Soap. The Himalayan rock salt. Rock no, salt. I feel like Ira. This is Ira's thing, man. He yeah. loves he loves Amelia Island. Yeah. All right. The ACC has teams in seven of the top 26 television markets in the United States. That does not include Orlando, Tampa, and New York City, where we have claim to a good share of the collegiate market. 
I don't know about New York City. I mean, everybody's got a good share of the collegiate market up there, right? just because of the sheer number. Like, if you know, there's probably as many Alabama fans up there as Florida State fans. I would think. I think he's talking about Syracuse. He's talking about the Syracuse okay. having a b- bunch of fans in New York City. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. All right. So, with being in seven of these top twenty-six markets, and that doesn't include Orlando and Tampa, which are top fifteen, I think, and the New York City, which is the number one market in the country, how can they be failing this bad? Any chance these guys can figure it out? Can we produce a quality product that will compete for viewers? I have a hard time thinking of any more than three or four teams that can compete. How did they do Nielsen ratings, Aslan? I w- you know, I know back uh, back in the 80s, it used to be you, you, you were selected. They had like 25,000 random families that would you track, the, yeah. you'd track what you'd watch, and then you'd fill it out, you'd give it to the Nielsen people, and they'd come up with a rating system based on that. But that can't. I mean, that's how Rain Man was. You remember that scene in Rain Man where Tom Cruise lies to that family? Yeah. He's like, "Hey, we're with the Nielsen because his his brother had to watch Wapner, and he's like, "We're with the Nielsens. We want to borrow your TV." But anyway, they they can't do that anymore, right? Or do they? No, I think in twenty like I was when I was in Mississippi, they still did diary. We were a diary market. We were a small enough market. We were still things were done by diary, which is your thing. They they mail it out. You write down what you watch. You mail it back to Nielsen. But and everything that was. Everything now is metered. So I don't know if it's built into your television, your set top box, or it's built into your cable box. But everything now is like automated. I think even Tallahassee, they'll know like at the end of every day what their sort of viewership was. So my my thought of finding forty percent of the Nielsen viewers and just paying them to watch Syracuse Boston College. Hmm. Like paying them a hundred dollars. Like you don't have to watch it. Just say you watched it. Or if they're monitoring your TV, keep your TV on and then go watch your iPad for three hours. Yeah. But we've got to do this. We And all of a sudden, you know, Syracuse Boston College in, uh, in September is getting a 12 share or something. That's the only way it's going to be. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter because the, 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 point of the, the point of the argument why they brought Syracuse and Boston College into the conference is all those eyeballs and TV sets. And you saw how long it took to get the ACC network off the ground. Off the ground, you see what kind of commercials they run on that thing. It did not matter at all because people in Syracuse and Boston don't care, and people in New York City and Boston don't care about college football and college sports in general. So it was pointless to bring those people in. That that I get what you're saying about the TV market, but they can't make people care about college sports if they don't care about college sports. And there's a those that what is that 25 million people in those two cities. And very, very, very few of them care about college sports, so it does it doesn't matter what the TV market is, sadly. But I'm with you. What? It's been a failure. Though, it's been what, a failure. What if we just had everybody listening to the show go to their local Best Buy and put every television in the Best Buy onto the ACC network? Okay, you think they monitor something like that? Maybe you know it's worth a shot. Okay. Go to every go to every go to go to every corner pocket like yeah. establishment in your neighborhood. They put it all in the ACC network. Tell Bill at Corner Pocket, hey, man, I want that whole Vegas wall of, with all those different TVs. They all need to be on the ACC network right now. It's, I mean, I don't want to say the SEC took things more seriously or it mattered more to them. I, I, I'm not one of these bad luck guys, but is it just maybe bad luck? The fact that Miami just has not figured out how to have a winning football program. The fact that Virginia Tech is falling on hard times as well. Um you know, North Carolina continues to be "quote unquote" a, some sort of sleeping giant. I mean, I don't, you know, who knows? It's been asleep for a long time. It, it might has, just be dead. Yeah, you know, Georgia Tech. Listen, you're in Atlanta. I mean, but you're second fiddle to UGA yeah. by a yep. huge margin. But yep. I mean, I don't know. Was it when in the '80s? Was it a little bit of a, a tighter sort of split between those two? I don't know how much of it. But the bottom line is, Florida State. We're not doing our part. Miami's not doing their part. Virginia Tech's not doing their part. Right, but I think I think, and that's true. And it is it is bad luck to like we talked about in the last show. It is bad luck that Miami for for the ACC purposes that Miami just uh, cratered um, after they joined the ACC. It's not bad luck to know that Syracuse and Boston College were going to bring you diddly. Yeah, nothing. They they offer they bring you nothing. They bring nothing to the table. Zero. Um, and, and that that was predictable. Anybody that knows anything knew that was predictable. Um, and, and, you know, they just don't care up there. And you already have enough non-caring football schools in this conference. Why bring two more to the party that just don't care? I mean, even you watch a Boston College basketball game, there's 1,200 people at it. They don't care about anything but hockey. In Syracuse, they do care about basketball at least, 
but they don't care about the sport that matters. And they haven't been good at it, I don't know, since Donovan McNabb was there. So it, it's just th those were those were easy to predict bad moves. Louisville's been a good move. Um, th that's but the that's only relatively one. speaking, though, right? I mean, yes, that's correct. Great, it's not relative it's not a Syracuse. needle mover. Yeah, like yeah, relative Louisville's to not a pit. needle mover. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's frustrating. The more you really do think about like it, like you would have, like what would it have taken? The money, the money, resources, and time you spent on Louisville. Syracuse, Pitt, and Boston College. Even take Louisville out of the equation. The last three, Syracuse, Pitt, Boston College. If you could have had the forethought to say back then, what if we went after Texas and Oklahoma? Yeah. Because the SEC did. Now, I know the SEC has a lot more pull than, than the ACC does currently, but in 2010, it wasn't necessarily that way. And also, the money was closer. And again, you probably couldn't have, you caught, you probably couldn't have pulled Texas and Oklahoma in 2010. They wouldn't have the Texas wanted its own network and everything. But, you know, if Texas and Oklahoma were out there to be bought, the ACC could have, I mean, think about the, the shift, that, the, the, the seismic shift in this sport if it was the ACC bringing in Texas and Oklahoma. But nobody even thought to do that. Nobody even thought, I'm sure, to even make an overture. Like, would you guys want to come play with us? We'll give you this, this, and this. And think about what it'll do to the TV contract, which is already more than what you're making in the Big 12. But think about what you're what you're doing for the TV contract. And yeah, we'll let you keep the Longhorn Network too, if that's what it takes. But nobody thought like that, and they go and join the uh, juggernaut instead. It's like Durant joining the Warriors when he could have gone and played for the Hawks. Uh, I mean, I could we could do a whole show on this of just like hypotheticals and what ifs and how it became. Um, don't have a good answer for you though. Alex. Yeah, and there's no Texas or Oklahoma's out there to go poach. No, nope. West Virginia. The SEC got yeah, That's all you. That's all that's left out there. And then you're yeah. trying to convince yourself, oh yeah, Pitt, you know, backyard brawl, bring it back. And sure, like, that's sure. Just not at all. I mean, just like did the, did the, it's always been popular this sport. I mean, at some point did it did the popularity explode and boom? Like, was there was there one TV contract cycle that just really changed the entire calculus of this all? I mean, was was somebody in Birmingham thinking, "All right, we're on. We're so close to making this just an absolute huge billion-dollar industry." Meanwhile, everybody in North Carolina and the Big Twelve and the Pac-12 was like, "Eh, you know, we're amateurism sports, and we're going to keep it the way it is." And we just didn't have the visionaries at those places that, you know, for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't but, know. But There's Mike probably Slive, a good book in there, like the SEC, dude. Mike Slive was the Sun Belt Commissioner. Like, Mike Slive is who presided over everything that made the SEC boom. And they took him from the Sun Belt. And yeah. it's just, I don't, don't want to keep thinking about it. All right. Oh, boy. Three graphs. Dave, Kentucky, Bardstown. Bourbon is your friend. I like my question from last week about pranks you guys might play on each other. Though I'm disappointed to hear the hijinks levels are low. Maybe instead of pranks, War Chant should institute certain punishments for staff members for various reasons, like being late to meetings, not getting articles completed on time, or excessive grammatical errors. Punishments might consist of having to create a burner account on War Chant and picking fights with people about nitpicky grammar rules. Uh, parenthetically, he adds, use, you used a gerund, or a gerund, a gerund, G-E-R-U-N-D, do you know how to pronounce that, Corey? I don't. You used a gerund when you should have used an infinitive, you moron. Mm. Way to end that sentence with a preposition. Uh, you use an adjective to modify an adverb, you troglodyte. Or perhaps even better, you have to ask an embarrassing question in a press conference, like on the show in Practical Jokers. Uh, Aslan would ask Coach Norvell, Mike, is there a certain dessert you like after a big victory? Corey would ask Coach Dugans, Hey, Ron, how often do you call Peter Warwick just to say hi? Now that I think of it, those are pretty good questions, and I really am curious what the answers are. Yeah, they're not embarrassing. Here's an idea I have for the Marching Chiefs. Okay. <laughs> Remember the show Benson? It ran on ABC from 1979 to 1986. We all remember it, right, gang? Yeah. I do, actually. And Benson actually came from Soap. He was a character on Soap, and then they gave him his own show, so it was actually a spinoff show. It's been almost 40 years since I've seen an episode, but I remember it being a pretty awesome show, and Robert... Goulier. Thank you. No. 
Yeah, Goulier. I, no, no, it's it not Goulier? Goulier. That's that's like a that's it's, a singer, uh, pruner. But it starts with a G, right? Goulam. I don't. It's it's French spelling. Yeah. yeah. G u i l l a u m. Oh man, I used to know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Um, Guillaume. We'll say that. All right. I'll I'll pull it up on YouTube here in a second and listen to how it's pronounced, and then I'll come back and correct it at some point. Anyhow, he always saves the day for the hapless governor. I think the marching chiefs should play the theme song from Benson every time Trey Benson scores a touchdown. Oh, boy. I know it's obscure, but it's a pleasant jingle, and it would be pretty funny for the few folks who get it. I don't know I if I think there's just business. fewer There's fewer and fewer of us that would get it, though, Dave. And also, I, I don't even know if I could remember the Benson theme. Yeah, I, um, I and I used to watch that show. That was, a fun, that, was a, that was a funny show. He was the butler. I think he was the butler for a, yeah, like he said, a, like a dim-witted governor. Um, was, but, yeah. was, was Mr. Belvedere a spinoff of Benson? Maybe I don't know. I just I don't think so. All right, I'm trying to find out the uh, how to pronounce his name. Anyhow, last paragraph from Dave. Uh, lastly, I watched Robin Hood Men in Tights, and aside from being a spectacular film, total Oscar snub, I was super excited to see them do the tomahawk chop to cheer yeah. Robin on in an archery contest. Yep. The movie was filmed and released in 1993, before our national championship season, and before it was really popular with the Braves and Chiefs. So it must be a reference to Florida State football. If anyone misses humor, that would be deemed politically incorrect today. I highly recommend this movie. I'm going to correct him there. That was uh, the Braves. The Braves made it world famous in 91 when they when they got to the World Series. Um, that's when they, they handed out all the foam, the rubber foam tomahawk chops, uh, the little chop. Arrow, what we tomahawks? Sorry, tomahawks, yeah. at the at the games and everything that started in '91. So that's when it. I'm sure that's when it caught whoever wrote or produced that um, in Hollywood. It's when it, it caught their eyes when the Braves were were playing the Dodgers that year to to beat them out of the pennant. Um, so yeah, I would I would like to think it was back. It was because it, it was it was started at Florida State, but I I think it was uh, they only knew about it because Robert of the Guillaume, Dave Who? Chappelle's in that movie. Yeah, a young Dave, a young Dave Chappelle. Yeah, uh, Google says it's pronounced Robert Guillaume. Guillaume, there you go. Uh, correct. Yep. There you go. Guillaume. I would not have been able on, to go Mark. on my weekend if I didn't get that figured out. Yeah, good work. That would hurt. All right. Um, thank you for your hijinks as usual, Dave. Uh, we appreciate it. Good old Dave, bringing it every week, doesn't he? Drill sergeant, absolutely. Drill sergeant Porter, wake up. Having our three permanent conference games consists of Miami, Clemson, and Georgia Tech would make the most sense. But a few years ago, I was at a gym on base. I met a guy that went to NC State. He told me apparently the FSU game is really big for them to the point where they have a countdown clock for the FSU game somewhere on their campus. Also, crazy how the ACC can enjoy the state of Florida with their meetings but couldn't get their network right in the same state. Either way... Go Knowles. Or like have any of the championships in Florida mm. ever. Mm. They're all in, well, yeah, they're all in North Carolina. Oh, and shout out, by the way, to the uh, women's golf team for uh, they won their regional like steamrolled to it and uh, advance the top four in the regional go to the uh, the nationals and they won it. So obviously they finished in the top four and uh, our, our girl Beatrice Wallen um, was the was the low medalist. She got the the lowest score of the of the round of the three days. So uh, she won a gold medal, I guess, for that. They get a medal for that, but yeah, they performed really, really well and dominated some really good teams. And now they'll go out to uh, I don't know where the where the national championships are, but it'll probably be like a week from now, and they'll be there. Florida State will be there with a chance to uh, win a championship. I was trying to look it up, but couldn't find it in time. All right, that is a wrap for us. Did we cord. answer? Did we answer that question? Oh wait, no. He just talked about NC State. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed. And listen, I'm I'm all for Virginia Tech. I would, you know, figure it out. Brent Pry or whoever their new head coach is, be good. I'm I'm cool with that. I wouldn't mind playing three teams that end up winning ten games at the end of the season. Uh, the standard is the standard, Corey. And I know at times you want to create an environment that makes that standard easier to, to get back to. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, yep. the, the standard was sort of achieved in a time and era when this conference didn't have a lot of really good teams. But we Correct. played a bunch of good teams that were outside of the conference, and we beat them. So, um, yeah, I don't – listen, Georgia Tech makes the most sense. I in no way, shape, or form am trying to say that it shouldn't be Georgia Tech. 
I'll be upset if it's Boston College or Syracuse or Pitt or if, if it's not Virginia Tech, then it's like, well, I don't know, maybe North Carolina or just give me somebody that's been relevant in, in college football here somewhat recently. Um, and relevant is relatively speaking because in this yeah. conference there really hasn't been anybody besides us and Clemson. So Correct. And I will say this, though, like even if they don't make a Georgia Tech, the beauty is you will play Georgia Tech every other year now. And you will play in Atlanta every four years now, as opposed to every seven. Mm. So at least in that regard, even if they're one of the other five, the way they rotate, you still will get Georgia Tech uh, twice out of every four years in a, in a road game in Atlanta, once out of every four years, as opposed to once out of seven. So it is better. You don't, you're not going seven years without visiting a, a, a place. Like Florida State's been to Virginia Tech. They haven't been back since 12, right? Yeah, I don't think is so. Is that right? Yeah. I've been yeah, that's crazy. Well, I'm saying, when uh, was the last 10 time? years since they played at, a, at a, a conference opponent's stadium. It's been 10 years. When was the That's last, just stupid. When was the last time Georgia Tech played here before COVID? I think that would have been... Like 08 or something? Would it have been 08, right? Maybe? Yeah. I can't be right, is it? Yeah, it I might be. Was, yeah, when they... Bobby when the uh, around. Or not 08, um, 09. Okay. Was it Mark? So Marcus the, Sims was that wasn't here, wasn't it? All right. Yeah, mind. that was in a, that was in Atlanta in 08. Yeah. and then 09 was the game where it was no defense I think, optional. Defense yeah, it was like 28-21 at halftime, and each team had scored every time they or 35-28, and each team had scored a touchdown all every time they got the ball. Yeah, eleven years, crazy. Yeah, how much? Nuts. How much would? Because I know you're talking about if it's Miami and Clemson, and then whomever else you're. You're pretty much guaranteeing yourself that you're going to be playing maybe maybe not the most the two best teams but probably two of the more talented teams in this conference. Like what what would you think if Miami's permanent opponent isn't Clemson, and what would you think if Clemson's other permanent opponent besides us is not Miami? Like what would if Clemson's ends up being their permanent opponent is us, NC State and Wake, and then Miami's permanent opponent is us, North Carolina and you know, Syracuse. Well, if it's not geographical, I just want to know what the thinking is. Yeah. Like, tell me what led to these decisions. Was it out of a hat? Mm -hmm. Was there lobbying? Did Florida State not want Georgia Tech? Like, I just want to know what the... Uh, it, what just, the it feels like Michael Alford, and I don't want to put it all on him, but like, somebody should be able to go to Jim Phelps and be like, listen, if this is what we're doing, the three five five model, it has to be Georgia Tech. It has to be Miami, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Like, who would say no? Like, I, what would the pushback be? I think the only thing I can think is if it, if those are just the – that's the pod. Like, maybe that becomes the pod for that those three teams or four teams. Maybe Georgia uh, Tech's like, hey, I don't want to play Florida State, Miami, and Clemson. Are you crazy? Oh, uh, okay. But not that Georgia Tech should have much of a voice. But I but I don't think it's going to be like that. I think I, – that would I don't think they're going to be their own pods necessarily. Um, but, I, but I do think that, like – so Georgia Tech would – I think Duke would be one maybe – um, they have a. We all love the Georgia Tech Duke football rivalry, don't we, gang? Oh yeah. So many great moments over the years, like that time where. And so anyway, I I don't think it will be. Uh, I don't think it would be a pod necessarily, but that would be the only thing I would think is like maybe Georgia Tech doesn't want that because they're like we got to play Georgia. You're gonna we always play Clemson because Clemson is geographical for them, so they're gonna have to play Clemson and Florida State now. Um, they might not be a fan of that, but I, I would just want to know how it was done. What was the formula used to de determine the three? Who Did you poll people? Did you poll the coaches? Is it just Jim Phillips saying this? Did you pull it out of a hat? Did you use some analytics? Like, just tell us what the reasoning was and how it came to be that these are the three teams, if it's not just geographical. Right on. All right. That is a uh, – That's. A, let me see. Let me shake the bag. Sometimes I get some stuck at the bottom. I feel mm. bad about it. Yep, that's it. That's a wrap. Okay, that's everybody. good, good, good. We did it. All right, we did do it. We'll be back on Monday, wrapping up the weekend. Probably have Michael Lanks on the program also discussing recruiting. So if you miss out on any of that stuff, we'll catch you up. But figure out when it's happening. Uh, it's called news for a reason. It's new. It's not maybe news on Mondays. Subscribe to WarChant.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. All these things will get you the information as quickly as possible. But we'll be here for you on Monday. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Chant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. 
Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.